My name is Dubi Raz, and I'm Netafim, a corporate global agronomist, okay, or chief agronomist to be simple. I'm going to talk about how we're going to change the face of agriculture. As everybody knows, the population is growing and increasing. There's less arable land. We don't have enough land to cultivate the food that we would like to grow. The water is an issue. Scarcity of water becomes a problem everywhere, actually. 70% of the fresh water are going for agriculture. Amazing thing about the agriculture, that out of the 70% of fresh water that goes to agriculture, 80% are flood irrigation. Only in Israel you can find 95% of deep irrigation. But the rest of the world is flood irrigation. The 3% are irrigated by drip. That's all. So on one hand, it's a very big opportunity. On the other hand, it's quite frustrating that after 50 years, we succeeded to do only 3%. But we are working on it. So what is the challenges that we are facing? First of all, we need to increase the yield. The farmer will not buy an irrigation system unless the yield will be better than what he has today. Then we should come with a mechanized solution. The next generation is not wear muddy boots. The next generation wants to play with these mobile and cellular and to activate the field from this. So we should come with a fully mechanized solution. Then we must come as environmental friendly because today the agriculture looks as the enemy of the environment and it's our job to change it. And then we should talk about the farm management. There's many big, big buzzwords of GPS, GIS, all these kind of words are big data that we can get data from the area and uh, make from this irrigation solution. Okay, if you continue to grow food the way we grow today, we can easily see that by 90, 2050, there's not be enough food. So we need to make a change. And the change, as mentioned, is to increase the yield. How can we do it? What is the limiting factor? Is it the varieties? Is it the water? Is it the fertilizer? Is it the plant population? Is it crop protection? Or it's all together. So we do a lot of work of variety tests. This is variety test of rice in India. I will touch rice in a minute. So you must come and to find the right variety for the drip irrigation, which will bring the best yields. The same is sugarcane in China. Drip irrigated rice. My colleague Eli Veres started to irrigate rice in the United States in 2002. So now we are celebrating Bar Mitzvah. For Israel, you know what is it, but we have now 50 years of Netafim and a Bar Mitzvah for the rice under drip irrigation. We are working in all these countries already. Uh, recently, we have a very big success in India, and we're talking about 9 to 11 ton per hectare. First of all, you should break the paradigm, okay, because people say the roots of the rice are very lazy. They will not work. So, under, between these two rows of rice, we put one drip line in the middle. Now, one would expect that the better crop will be close to the dripper because it's full of water. But we come out with the other way around. At 30 centimeter, the rice feel happier. Look at this root system. So, and people saying that uh, the roots of the rice are lazy. No, it's not lazy. It can work very hard. The next generation say no. No one will go and bend and plant the rice in this way. It's going to finish very soon. We can do dry seeding. We can work with machine. This planting machine in Taiwan can insert the drip line on the same time. The idea is that we are going to change everything to mechanize solution. Harvesting in Denmark, they collect data, they have metrological station, and then by this they decide how to irrigate. The same machine will go and plant the seedlings and put the drip lines on one path. Sugarcane, very big crop for Netafim. We grow about 250,000 hectares around the world. Now usually people waste about 10% of the area to grow seed cane. Then they harvest the macheta and put it in the field. But we can work like this. We can work with seedlings. It's about time the sugar can become like any other vegetable crop. This planting machine, and this is something that we're doing now in India, is going to plant the sugar can. Imagine how much work we save. And then we talk about crop management technology. And the idea is to take everything that's in the field, all the data, to come to our cellular, to, to come to our mobile, and to the computer in the office. So we can have farm management on, with real-time data. We have sensors. We have tensiometer to check the water, uh, soil moisture. We have water meter, meteorology station. What is the level of the water in the tank? We can get all the information to your mobile. And by this, we're going to run the, the farm. We irrigate the plant. When we talk about environment, we irrigate the plant and not the soil. Look at this picture. It talks for itself. 
We are not irrigating all the land like this. And when you irrigate rice like this, you create a lot of gas emission. Because of anaerobic condition, we get a lot of methane. This work was done in Thailand, and you can see here how much methane is coming out. By checking it with machines, we can find out this is flood irrigation, paddy rice, and this is drip irrigation. In flood irrigation, we got about 60 ppm of methane per square area, and with drip, we got just nothing. And it's about time that the world will pay attention. Groundwater contamination. This is in Australia, close to the Great Barrier Reef. We have here sugarcane plots. They put a lot of nitrogen on the field. Heavy rain comes or flood irrigation. Everything goes down, nitrate leaching, go to the Great Barrier Reef and create a very big hazard. Why we are doing different? Because we are working on teaspoon feeding. We can follow the curve of the growth of the plant and give him the right amount of the fertilizer. We don't need to give more. So we never create any excess nitrate leaching. What is the best way to spray chemicals? You think this is the best way? You pollute all the area around, but we can do it actually through the drip system. We can drive, we have a system in the field, we can drive chemicals, bioagent, many good things and bad things through the drip system because it's already there, and like this, we don't pollute the earth. So we can become much more environmental friendly. And remember, this is the most important thing. Every drop counts, and we save 50% of water in flood irrigation, and when we talk about rice, we, we save 70% of water. Thank you.